Nathaniel W. Martin. Here is Reverend Martin. Hi, and good morning, good afternoon, good evening, certainly never good night, and pray God never goodbye. I hate goodbyes, don't you? I'm Reverend Nathaniel W. Martin, pastor of New Life Institutional Baptist Church here in Los Angeles, Southern California. Uh, we're located at 8916 South Main, and weekly we come to the studios here of KTYM uh, Radio on KTYM Media, however you may be receiving it, and we do an episode entitled, It's Time. And what is it time for? Why, it is time for justice, social, ecological, environmental, and of course that would include reparation, because as we look around the country, the United States of America, we can see that the poor have been pinned in to these floodplains and down in the bottoms of the uh, various counties and cities all across America where the rain and the flood is going to be the heaviest, places where they should not have been placed. But because of historical racism, because of slavery and its legacy, we are yet dealing with those issues even at this very moment. We have uh, a great task before us, but it's not an undoable task. Uh, I think Ron O'Neill said that any job that's worth doing may not be done by the time uh, of your death, in a lifetime. But that doesn't mean that the job should not be begun. It doesn't mean that the job should not be continued. And so we who have the legacy and are the descendants uh, of slavery or the descendants of Jim Crow and segregation and resegregation and police abuse at all levels, at all times, in all periods, we must not forsake this struggle. We must steadfastly press on, and we must steadfastly, steadfastly press on knowing that we can make an impact and make a difference uh, in this great milieu in which we are embroiled. Uh, the scriptures that we use today and generally in our episodes are from uh, the Old Testament and the New Testament. Although, of course, when you begin to search the scriptures for justice and what God says about justice and equality and righteousness and, and uh, truth, you cannot help but find many uh, portions of scripture, chapters even, where God not only talks about the benefits of justice and equality, but also the penalty for those who deny justice and who deny uh, fairness and who conduct themselves in a dishonest and treacherous manner. The treacherous dealer dealeth treacherously, which is a very important scripture uh, from the book of Isaiah. In the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 24, it says, Thou shalt not oppress an hired servant that is poor and needy, whether he be of thy brethren or of thy strangers that are in thy land within thy gates. I'm reading the King James Version. At his day thou shalt give him his hire, that means give him his pay. Neither shall the sun go down upon it, for he is poor, and setteth his heart upon it, lest he cry against thee unto the Lord, and it be sin unto thee. I would like you to note the word oppressed, and notice that the scripture says, God says, thou shalt not oppress. If there's one thing that I've learned, it is that God is always with the people who are downtrodden, the people who are oppressed. That means when you oppress uh, people, you are in essence oppressing God, truly, because as the scripture says, how can you love God whom you have not seen? and hate your brother and your sister by inference, whom you see every day. And uh, as I've said on other episodes, so I continue to reiterate, when we defraud uh, each other, we in essence defraud God, because we are not only just made in the image and likeness of God, 
but God is present in all of our dealings and all of our transactions. He's already, always uh, the silent partner in all of our dealings. No, you cannot escape God. You may try to dismiss him or become agnostic or atheistic, but at the final analysis, God is involved in all that we do. Uh, there's a power that shapes our ends, I think is a shake, old Shakespearean quotation, rough hew them how we will. Uh, you will not get away from the divine God who judges and who shall judge us for the things done in our body. But it says that thou shalt not oppress. Don't be an oppressor. Don't be an oppressor. There should neither be oppressed so on, nor should there be a person who is oppressed. We should all be striving, as uh, Pablo Freire said, for our humanity. But as the Bible said, we should be striving to become more and more like God. To become more and more what God would have us to be. I believe Pablo Freire in his book, Pedagogy of the Oppressed, uh, says that we should labor to transcend our objective a reality or to change or to transform our objective uh, reality, which means our physical uh, situation should not be a limitation. It should neither be looked upon as a limitation, neither should be judged as a final limitation. Remember, it's not where you start is where you end up uh, in life. And many of the people who in, prayed for freedom in slavery never saw that freedom, but they prayed for it because they knew it was there. They knew that that year of Jubilee was coming. And after we got freedom in the Emancipation Proclamation uh, in 1863, in August uh, 28, 1963, 100 years and some months later, uh, even Dr. King was saying, we still are not free. And so just because uh, the journey is begun or just because uh, we hit a plateau does not mean that we surrender and give up the fight, which I had a witness. Uh, just because uh, you can exult and rejoice and say that in, as it regards the opposition that you have faced, I made it does not mean that you got it made. You have to continue to press on in the fight because there will always be more mountains to climb, more giants to overcome, more valleys to cross, and more problems to be solved. Somebody preached a sermon years and years ago, so the giants keep on coming. And truly, that is what life is about. Uh, it is about a constant overcoming, a constant winning, a constant enduring, a constant pressing, a constant pushing. And that pressing and that pushing, that enduring, that overcoming, that achieving, it gives us what the Bible calls experience, experience patience. And uh, what the New Testament writer said, patience maketh us not ashamed, or that hope maketh us not ashamed, because the love of God is shed abroad in our hearts. And truly, we who are overcomers and uh, we who are more than conquerors must not shirk or shrink uh, from the, the, the task that is pressed before us, but we must rise to the task and continually go out to confront and assault the forces of injustice, the forces of inequity because they are many and sometimes they wear a uniform which I had witnessed. It is a, a truism my brothers and my sisters that if a person won't treat you right in one instance they will not treat you right in other instances. If, In other words if a person has in so much contempt or scorn for you that they will not pay you for your labor for your work then their attitude or their prejudice or their bigotry or their bias will also manifest itself in many other ways. I think President Donald Trump is a perfect example 
of uh, that attitude and what happens when that attitude uh, rises to high heights as it is uh, in this year of 2018 when Donald Trump is president of the United States of America, while the president of the United States is the most of America is the most powerful person in the world, the most powerful person in government, of all governments on all of the face of the earth. And you can tell from the scorn and the contempt that he has for people that uh, he would not treat you fairly in uh, if you work for him. And as that can be attested by many people who've had to engage in lawsuits uh, in order to uh, bring him to honor some of his uh, contracts. Be that as it may, God says, Thou shalt not oppress and hide servant. That is poor. Now the Bible uses the uh, pronouns he and his and him. But of course we know that uh, when the Bible talks about man, it uses the general term anthropos, which encompasses the entire species. And that includes male and female of the species, since man is the male is never complete without the female, which you could get a witness. And so uh, both, in other words, genders are to be treated equally. Let me say that again. Both genders are to be treated equally. And uh, God says, you shall not be an oppressor. And that includes me, whether I have someone working for me or whether I'm working for you, or whether you're working for some great conglomerate, some great uh, huge corporation that has uh, billions of dollars of salted offshore in these various accounts, uh, or else it's your company or my company. We ought to be do fairly in our dealings with one another. Notice that the Bible says, at that day, that means when the day is done, there was no 40-hour work week, but whatever the condition, the circumstances may have been, or the uh, the agreement at the time appointed, and if the the, the qualification or the 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 uh, requirements have been met, then of course we were to what honor our obligation. I hit on this every week because it bears repeating. Because we all get cheated, and some of us are cheaters. Shame on you. And we need to uh, tighten up our game because when we cheat one another, in essence, we are really cheating God. And God does not like to be cheated. Notice that the scripture says, At his day thou shalt give them their hire, neither shall the sun go down upon it, for they are poor, and set their hearts upon it, lest they cry against thee unto the Lord, and it be sin unto thee. And as you look at the country and look at the world and uh, look at the dealings on Wall Street, uh, the Fortune 500 companies and uh, how many bankruptcies there have been uh, filed by these companies in order to get out from underpaying their employees or paying their uh, benefits and even uh, municipalities have forced uh retirees to renegotiate the contract that they entered into uh, when the people were working for them uh, in good faith, believing that when they retired that the, comp that the county or the city or the state or even the federal government would honor the terms of the agreement. But yet, when they retired, then you had people come along who shall remain nameless even right here in the city of Los Angeles, said we're going to renegotiate these contracts. In other words, they made the, the retiree take a haircut, is what they call it. Really, they defrauded the retiree because they promised the retiree 100% or 90% of their salary after they retired, and now that retiree is getting sometimes less than 50% of that uh agreed upon some. And so uh, that's, that, that's the, the problem of uh, defrauding people or 
uh, oppressing people goes far beyond just uh, you and I. You have to look at the entire milieu, the the entire panoply, if you will, of uh, human interactions and see where these injustices continue uh, to obtain. In the New Testament, James chapter 5, verse 4, says very quickly, Behold the hire of the laborers who have reaped down your fields, which is of you kept back by fraud. And that term kept back by fraud means that you had the money to pay, but you told the people you was broke. You told the employee that you didn't quite have all of it. And you had way more than that. But you decided to play slick and engage in deceit. And in so doing, God places you in the, in the category of being an oppressor. Because you could have done right, but you didn't do right. You could have helped, but you wouldn't help. All of these uh, states of mind play into all other ways in which human beings interact. I hate to go down to Dallas, but I must go down to Dallas. We must talk about what is happening there when a black man cannot be safe in his own upscale, high-security apartment from being mistaken as an intruder by the police. This poor man that we are talking about in uh, Dallas, lived in one of those high-security uh, apartment buildings. It was an upscale apartment building, upscale apartment complex, but no poor folks living in there. It was people who had good jobs, good professional people, uh, not the run-of-the-mill type of a dwelling. And so this uh, young man, uh, Mr. Botham, Jean, they keep calling him Jean, but his name was Jean. And uh, he lived in such, just such a case, just such a situation. Well, he had a reasonable expectation of being in uh, security, of not being molested, not being bothered, not being hampered. But yet on September 6th, a police officer who was off duty, but was still in uniform and lived in the apartment below his, somehow wound up at his apartment door. And we're hearing now two different stories. The, the story has changed from last week's episode when we said that uh, she found the door open and opened the door and saw a figure across the room. But now we hear that she told the police that uh, he banged on the door and he opened the door in his underwear. Now what threat is a man in his underwear? Come on, people. Stay woke. But yet she shot him saying that he was an intruder when in fact he was in his own I remind you, his own apartment that he was paying the rent on. He wasn't, he wasn't breaking and entering. He wasn't there as a vagrant. He was not a squatter. Uh, he was not there as a guest of somebody else. It was his apartment. And he had a reasonable expectation of privacy, which was shattered. And uh, he had a reasonable expectation that his life uh, would not be endangered. Uh, by the police showing up at his door. Mind you that this police officer was not on duty. And according to the story that has changed, this officer claimed that she mistook him for a burglar. And drawing her revolver or whatever kind of weapon it was, it was a pistol, handgun, you know how they do. And uh, she gave him orders or commands Quite naturally, you in your own apartment, who is this giving me orders in my apartment, coming in my door? And anyway, the woman shot, the officer 
shot and killed him. She was off duty, but she was in uniform. And it was in Dallas County, but she was not arrested. I said she was not arrested. If you had done that, you would have been arrested right then. You would have been fingerprinted and booked in and had to bail your way out that night, that day, that September 6th. But she was not arrested until September 9th, some three days later. And she was not arrested in Dallas County, which is where she lived and where the shooting took place. But no, she and her, uh, what is it, the uh, Lone Star State uh, Troopers, Texas Rangers, not the football team. <laughs> The Texas Rangers didn't, uh, which who uh, who who took jurisdiction of the case from the Dallas Police Department decided that they would not arrest her until she was not until she was in Kaufman County, and from what I hear, she had a right to leave Dallas County and go down to Kaufman County. The thing about that is that in Dallas County, the ratio of the population of the white citizenry to the Black citizenry is lower, whereas in uh, Kaufman County, where she was eventually arrested, the and therefore because of being there, she's going to be tried there. The ratio of of white people to everybody else is eighty three percent. So it's going to be like uh, L.A. County versus Simi Valley, L.A. City downtown on Hill Street versus uh, C.B. Valley in the O.J. Simpson trial. So you see they're already working to stack the deck against Mr. Uh, Botham Shim Jean. And uh, it's important that we get his name correctly pronounced. Uh, the last name is spelled J-E-A-N. And uh, we, we from the country, we pronounce it Jean. But then, no, it's not Jean. It's pronounced just like uh, a man's name, Jean, but by being French, it's Jean. We pronounce it John. Doesn't matter. Point is that if we don't stay woke, the people, the system that has defrauded us from slavery will defraud us again in, in our quest for justice. His poor mother laments the loss of her child. And under such questionable, perplexing, quizzical uh, circumstances, uh, he was not a threat. He was not armed. He was not in her apartment. He was in his own apartment. And uh, it's rather titillating, uh, if you will, to wonder, did they know each other? Uh, did she know him? But according to the lawyer for the family, that uh, there had been a complaint, this police officer who lived in the apartment directly beneath him, in other words, uh, he was in 1478, she was in the next floor down in apartment 1378, had uh, filed a complaint about noise. Now, it could have been that she went up there to stop the noise. And uh, now she's trying to create a, a scenario, a narrative, if you will, rather than just say a lie, uh, in which it appears that she was innocent in uh, uh, killing, let's say murdering, uh, Mr. Botham Shim Jean. Very, very uh, successful young man, had a good job at Price Waterhouse. And uh, you got to have a good job. You got to have a good mind to be in those uh, type of positions. And I imagine when he rented that apartment, he rented it with the idea that I've got me a good security, uh, a well-secured place to live, and I'm going to be all right. But looks like if you're black in America, it's never all right. 
you'll never see, not even in your own apartment, from the police intruding. And that, my friends, is the oppressor striking out against the oppressed. You may work for Price Waterhouse, but you're still oppressed. You may have college degrees, but you're still oppressed. You may live in these beautiful, uh, comfortable, well-appointed, high-security, gated communities, but you are, in essence, still oppressed. And your oppressor is always trying to get away with murder. They have not called this officer a murderer. She was not booked for murder. No murder charge was filed. What was filed was a manslaughter charge, a manslaughter. She murdered the man, but she was only accused or charged with manslaughter. And as we said, it was not, she was not booked. She was not arrested that day or that minute or that hour. Uh, she was allowed to proceed as though she was on duty when really she was off duty. And uh, she was able to leave Dallas County and go to Kaufman County, another county where the Texas, long Texas Rangers, I guess, have their headquarters. And three days later, after she got down there, they arrested her. Finally, and they said, when asked why didn't they arrest her sooner, they said, because she was cooperating. Well, you know, if you <laughs> shoot somebody and the police arrest you, well, you know, you're going to get booked and fingerprinted and everything. You're going to have to bail out, get an attorney, and uh, you're going to have to give your version of the story. And uh, this officer has uh, been shielded and sheltered. She hasn't given her story. Now she gave a different version of the story from what it was on September 6th. Wrong apartment, wrong floor, wrongful killing, wrongful death, murder, murder, homicide, and no doubt that was going to be, that we might find out that there was some malice of forethought. Hmm? Now they're, they're using, they've already put out several conditions, mitigating conditions, saying that the officer might have been fatigued because the officer had worked a 12 to 15 hour shift. They have not yet released the toxicological report on whether or not she had alcohol or drugs in her system. But they did conduct a search warrant on poor Mr. Botham. Shim Jean, in which they say that they found some marijuana. But if they found marijuana in the apartment, and it was only, I bet she was only a blunt, was that, did that officer know that he had a blunt in his house when she went in there and killed him? Let us not be ridiculous. And so we need to stay woke. I want to close by uh, joining with the family of our late Brother, Brother Johnny Morris, praying that God's blessing will rest upon them and God's continued mercy and love would embrace them as they lay their Zion to rest uh, there in uh, Fresno, California. I believe there's a service here next Saturday. And uh, we all pray, ask you to keep the family in your, your prayers. Uh, there's a lot of oppression, there's a lot of sadness, there's a lot of sorrow. But yet we press on because there is also joy. Uh, there's joy in the midst of our conflict because God gives us strength. He's not given us the spirit of bondage again to fear, but the spirit of love, power, and of a sound mind. And as I say to all of us, all the time, over and over, if you're working, for somebody, they don't want to pay you with all these millions, billions, and trillions of dollars in the in the world today. Don't work for them. 
God bless you. May God keep you till we see you again. We out, Doc.